Hello everyone, Simon3D here and today I want to show you how you can easily wrap any object in plastic, sort of like a vacuum packaging thingy. So it comes from this bubbly plastic material sphere and then it gradually just sucks all the air out of there until we have our result, which I think it looks really cool. And honestly, there is just so many ways to achieve vacuum plastic packaging. So I will divide this tutorial onto two parts and in the first part we will mainly focus on a shrink wrap modifier which drives this whole effect and on the second part we will ditch the shrink wrap and instead we will use a cloth simulation. This setup works quite nicely in EV in real time but if you want the best results then obviously it's better to switch to cycles because then you can use a subsurface scattering on your model and also cycles renders are just so much better. But for the most part, because of the speed of the EV engine, we will work in that. And only at the end, in the rendering phase, we will switch to cycles to just improve it here and there. And as always, if you manage to do something out of this tutorial, I would really love to see that. So share with me on Twitter, link for that in the description. And now let's jump right into the empty blender scene. So first of all, let's delete everything. And we will start with importing our model. I got mine from 3dscans.com. It's a really great website with really high quality 3D scans and you can use them without any copyright restrictions. So I think it's perfect for the tutorial. So just choose something that you like and something that you would like to have wrapped in plastic. And after you save it on your computer, go into Blender, File, Import and OBJ because I believe all of the models there are in OBJ format. Then navigate to your model and import it into your scene. This may take a while because the model is really dense. So we will need to optimize it a little bit first, but when it finally loads, it will be probably super huge. So first of all, we will make it a bit smaller and then rotate it on the X axis by minus 90 degree to have it in the upright position. Also control A, apply the rotation and scale just in case. And right now we can go into the modifiers tab and add a remesh modifier. Now, depending on your machine, you can go without the remesh modifier and just keep the high resolution version, but then your viewport may become laggy and also even crash. So because I'm recording this, I will probably use a low resolution version of this model. So maybe the default settings are all right. With check smoothing, it looks quite fine. So I will just apply this modifier via this drop down list apply. Now with this reduced polygon version of the model, we can add a plastic that is going to wrap around the object. And so let's add a mesh and maybe UV sphere and scale it up. Just make sure that it covers our mesh completely. Go into the wireframe mode with Z and scale it. So more than from this view seems like it's covering everything. Just go around the mesh and make sure that none of the statue pops out of our sphere because it will produce a bad result later. So with the shape already done, we can also click right mouse button and choose shade smooth and go into the modifier and choose shrink wrap modifier. Now what shrink wrap does is you choose the target object on which this original sphere will be basically shrink wrapped onto. So if we choose the dragon, you can see that it's wrapping around our object and that is great. But the problem is that you can see there is some small things that just basically punch a hole in our plastic wrap and that is not what we want at all. And we will fix that a little bit later. But first of all, let's lay down some basic material so that we can see what we're actually doing because right now everything is solid. So let's go into the material preview, drag in a new viewport and that is gonna be a shader editor. Now with the sphere selected, let's also name it a plastic wrap so that we don't get confused later let's go into the shader editor click n to get rid of this ribbon and new to create new material we can leave the principled bsdf as it is but what we need to change in order to see some transparency in eevee is in the render settings make sure that the screen space reflections are checked and also the refraction is checked as well because we are going for a plastic wrap and plastic is slightly refractive so we would make use of it as well now go into the material properties scroll all the way down and in the blend mode change opaque into alpha blend and also enable screen space refraction and now with this done you can see that there is some changes to how our plastic wrap looks like but in order to improve it quite a lot let's go into the shader editor and in the principled bsdf Let's bring in the transmission value all the way up to one. And as you can see, we can already see through the plastic wrap quite nicely. So now let's select the dragon and give it some material as well. You can see that as you downloaded it from the 3D scans, it already has a default OBJ material. 
and this is fine you can use this one as well or whatever other material that you have i don't know if you want to make it look like marble then feel free to do so but what i will do i actually downloaded this meat texture that honestly looks like a jade or marble thingy like polished stone when it's applied to the model so i'm gonna go with that but feel free to use whatever you want so in the shader editor add a image texture then with the image texture selected click ctrl t to get a mapping and texture coordinates node and if this shortcut doesn't work for you, then go into the Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, look for Node Wrangler, and make sure that it's enabled because this shortcut actually comes from this add-on. It's built in in the Blender, so you don't have to download any extra stuff. So with the Texture Coordinate and Mapping node set up, we can change it from UV to Object, add a value node that we will connect into Scale, change it to 1, and then we can plug this image texture into our principled BSDF base color. And now as you can see, the model turned to black because in the image texture, we did not specify which image does it have to use. So click open and choose the texture that you want to be applied on your model. As you can see, the scale of the texture is quite messed up at the moment. And if you want to have just a quick result that will look nice in the camera, but is not the best practices, you can go into the texture coordinates and just change it from object to window. And that is gonna set this texture to be mapped onto the model, depending on the camera position and rotation that you're looking at the model from. So I will go with that because I know that in my scene, the camera is gonna be static and just stay in one place, but feel free to unwrap the model and apply it correctly from the UVs, coordinates, whatever your scene requires, basically. So with the basics of the material setup, let's also set up our scene so first of all let's add a camera and now when you're satisfied with your shot simply click ctrl alt and zero on the numpad which is going to align the camera into your viewport now we can also click n to get this ribbon go into the view and check camera to view and now as you navigate around the viewport the camera stays aligned with it so you can easily position it however you want so i will just go with a basic middle center shot and when you're satisfied uncheck it again so that you don't move your camera by accident and we can get out of the camera and set up our background so shift a mesh plane let's scale it up quite a bit and then go into the edit mode select those two edges and then click tab to go into the edit mode select those three edges Click E to extrude and then Z to extrude it only on the Z axis. Now we can select all those edges, Ctrl B, and then as we drag, we can bevel those edges. And using the mouse wheel, we can add a subdivisions to it so that we have a nice smooth transitions. Maybe something like this. Go out of the edit mode and right mouse button shade smooth. Let's go to the camera view again by pressing zero on the numpad and we can place it a little bit lower so that we have some space between our object and the ground. Now we can also give it a material so click new and change the surface to diffuse because we don't want anything fancy with this background and we can also change color to something maybe greenish this time. And with this done, let's make this viewport a little bit bigger and change it to 3D viewport and we can start laying down some lights in the scene. So shift A, light, area light, move it higher and same as in the previous scene in the beginning of the video we'll go with a top and down light setup so let's shift d to duplicate this lamp then z to go down and then rotate it on the x-axis by 180 degree to shine from the bottom let's also bring this backdrop quite lower so that we have some more space to work with and the walls of it quite higher so that we still don't see any empty space in our camera view now we can switch to the render preview and start tweaking our lights so let's bring this quite low but just so that we can still see it make the size quite big something like this and also then depending on your scene size basically the scale of your object you will have to tweak the power accordingly so because my scene is quite big as i can see already i'll probably have to go with some like ridiculously high values like 20,000 in order to lit up this model even a little bit maybe 40,000 and then i will apply the same settings on the top light so make it quite big and also 40,000 and now if we look at our rendered preview you can see that the model has those really dark shadows in here and that is because right now the plastic wrap is casting shadow and in order to change that we can go into the material properties with the plastic wrap selected scroll all the way down and in the shadow mode just change it from opaque to none so now that we have set up basically everything in a very basic and crude state we can start moving on to polishing our effect so first of all let's click on the plastic wrap and go into the shader editor and let's start by 
lowering the alpha value quite a bit, maybe like 0.4, which is going to make the plastic more transparent. And we can also increase the index of refraction quite a bit. If you want to be completely accurate, then there is this website that has the index of refraction of various materials. So feel free to refer to this if you want, but I will probably go with my gut and just increase it a little bit until I'm satisfied with the result. So something like 1.9 seems quite fine. And now one more thing, because it's plastic. We will also bring down the roughness value quite a bit to like 0.12 to make it a little bit more shiny and reflective. And with all this done to the material we can start refining our plastic wrap itself. So with it selected let's go to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. Now we will actually need two of those. So one will go before the shrink wrap and then one more that will go after the shrink wrap. And that is because both of them are doing slightly different job. So as you can see Right now we have the shrink wrap wrapping around the object, but sometimes it's missing some parts and our object is just popping through. And that is what the first subdivision is for. As we increase the levels of the subdivision, you can see that the model is being more refined and just sticks to the surface of the object more accurately. And that is because we're just adding more vertices that the shrink wrap is being calculated on. So go quite high with this, but not too much, just until you feel quite satisfied with the result. And you can also see that the plastic itself looks now more like plastic, looks more stretched and just overall resembles plastic way more. I'm not sure how to explain that, but just it's just a feeling. I hope that you feel it as well. And now the second subdivision modifier, if we turn it off, you can see that we have this very even crystal like effect of the plastic, but that is not ideal. Maybe for some it is, then feel free to use that as it is. But I like it when it's a little bit more soft. So that is why I like to have the second subdivision modifier, which is going to just soften the plastic quite a bit. And you can also increase the subdivisions, but just don't go too crazy because this can slow down your performance quite a bit. And you can see that because we're using the transmission in our material, we have those nice refractions inside. And I just think it looks so much better with it. But of course, alternatively, if you want to have a different effect, we can you can bring the trans... But of course... But of course, alternatively, if you want to have a different effect, you can bring the transmission all the way down and then you have this sort of cellophane uh, look of a plastic or like a plastic bag that is not fully transparent. And then the transparency is controlled solely by this alpha value. But then again, I mean, it's just something for you to adjust however you want it. I will keep it like that because I just like this result so much. Oh, and also one more tip. Right now, as we can see, this is a plastic wrappy thingy, but if we simply change the base color to something, I don't know, uh, let's choose something bluish and then bring the alpha slightly higher, then boom, out of a sudden we have sort of epoxy looking material. And I just think this is really beautiful. And when I was doodling it, I immediately knew that that's something that I want to make a tutorial about because I think it's really cool. But let's stick to the tutorial still because we have one more thing to do. Uh, as you can see right now, we can only make the shrink wrap either on or off. And when it's off, then you have this bubble, which in and on itself looks nice as well. But we would like to have a control over how the shrink wrap is being applied onto our model. Sort of zero to one gradient. And that is actually very simple. You simply select the plastic wrap and go into the object data properties. Then click plus to add a vertex group. Now with this group selected, let's go into the edit mode. And with, with all the vertices selected, let's hit remove so that we have this group basically empty. And now we can go back into the modifiers tab and add a vertex weight edit modifier. And then let's move it all the way up and choose the vertex group that we just created. Check group add. And now also one more thing, very important. In the shrink wrap modifier, we have to choose the same vertex group as well. And as you can see right now, everything just set up to nothing. And that is because we control the amount of the shrink wrap through this value default weight in the vertex weight edit modifier. So as we bring it on, you can see that the shrink wrap is being applied to our model. And now you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it, like animate it if you want to have this nice effect, etc. So I'm just letting you know that it's there and you can have all the stages in between zero and one. So if you're going for the epoxy thingy, then maybe something like this already starts to looking nice. And yeah, all of this is working in the EV render engine and it's already looking super nice. I mean, we can add actually one more light, simply duplicate this one move it a little bit and let's shine it from this side so that we have this this cool highlight and maybe let's lower the power of this one quite a bit 
So we have just this slight highlight. I think it looks really amazing already. And again, it's still EV real-time engine, so that's really crazy. But now to make it look even better, we can switch to the cycles and adjust few settings to make it exponentially better, I think. So let's first change the device to GPU so that we have a faster computation time. And first let's go into the Dragon material and bring in the subsurface quite a bit, maybe like 0.4. And then in the subsurface color, we can plug the same texture that we have. And what this will do, it will basically check the model for its thickness and where the model itself is thinner, it will just apply slightly lighter color. So if we bring the subsurface all the way up, you can see the difference. The tail is much more orange than let's say the body because the tail itself is much thinner in geometry than the body itself. Another thing we can improve is let's go to the plastic wrap and we can first of all lower the alpha so that it looks more like plastic again. And then the real game changer is the lightning which in cycles is just so much superior compared to EV. So we can actually hide those lamps that we have right now. Instead of using lamps, this time we will use a geometry with emission shader. And that is just something that I took from Polyfjord videos because his lightning always looks so nice and like eerie, I would even say. And that is because he's using the planes with emission material, basically. So let's bring it down, make it bigger. And then into material, click new and change the surface from principled BSDF into emission. And then the color is basically the color of our light and the strength is the power. So as you can see, this light acts much different than the area light and it just lights up all the scene in such a pleasant and soft way that I just like it so much. And then the size of the plane also matters. So let's set it to something like this and duplicate it and move it all the way up. So we have the light from top as well, maybe not as strong be like this and then boom we have this really amazing result i mean just look at all these details that we have i mean this could even pass for some like art piece packaged in order for some shipping or something and oh actually one more thing that i wanted to show you before we finish this part of the tutorial is something that's not very groundbreaking or like changing too much about the result of this but still it's a nice little touch that maybe you want to use so in the material of the plastic wrap we can add a transparent VSDF and a mix shader node and we can connect it like so the principle goes to the bottom and translucent on top oh sorry not translucent but transparent VSDF my bad I always mix those two and then the factor of the mix shader is gonna be a Fresnel node that is connected to the color ramp so as we preview the color ramp right now uh, the preview with the node wrangler enabled is Control shift and left mouse button on the node. You can see that the Fresnel itself highlights the edges of the mesh, basically. And as you change the index of refraction, you have slightly different results. But now if we connect this to the mix shader and then preview the mix shader itself, you can see that we have sort of crystal or even glass type of effect. And then as you bring the black value in the color ramp, you can see that we have only the sharp edges of the model. Uh, visible with the reflection and refraction. So just something that you may want to use or not really, you can just use the basic principle to be SDF. I was just letting you know that it's there and you can have fun with it as well. So yeah, feel free to experiment with all that I just showed you right now. And I hope that you come up with something really amazing. If you do, then let me know on Twitter. And as we try to introduce the new sort of game in the last video, today's word is meat so that we stay within the theme of the material of our dragon. So for those of you who don't know, but still made it up to this point of the video, that's sort of a new way of interaction, I would say, that I came up with. Uh, basically, we take the word of the video, in this case, it's meat, and we'll just try to create one sentence, including this word, but not being about the tutorial itself. So yeah, show me what you got in the comments, and I will see you in the next one which is gonna be the part two of this video when i will go over also wrapping the object inside a plastic wrap but this time but this time we will use a cloth simulation instead of the shrink wrap so stay tuned